Hi there again. Thanks very much for um, tuning into my second video. Uh, and this video is all going to be about um, comparing econometrics um, with sort of what I'm going to call hard science. So you can think about that as being sort of biology, chemistry, physics, and I suppose mathematics as well. So first of all, I'm going to start by talking about what we typically do in science. So in science, we might be interested in whether um, something A causes an event B to occur. So A here um, could be, let's say, a substance. So it could be some sort of chemical. And we're interested in whether um, that chemical, if I put it sort of in a, a test tube with water, whether this causes some sort of reaction to occur. So maybe it causes um, the effervescence of um, CO2. So if we're interested in understanding that, uh, whether this actually does occur, then what we would do is we would, in science, we would create one test tube, which I'm gonna call the experiment, and the other one, which I'm gonna call um, the control. So in the experimental test tube, we have put the substance, um, and by comparing that with the control, we can basically ascertain perfectly whether um, A, in this case a substance, causes B to occur. The difference with econometrics is that um, we can't typically undertake experiments. I'm going to give an example. So um, one particular area of interest in econometrics, um, specifically microeconometrics, is whether and um, military um, participation causes um, lifetime income to be lower. And so what we would do if we were thinking about this scientifically, um, well, we would take two identical twins, we would then let one of them go into the military and one of them um, stay a civilian. And then at the end of it, we would or the end of their lives, we would compare the lifetime income of the person that went into the military with the lifetime income of the person that remained a civilian. And by comparing these two um, lifetime incomes, that gives us that would give us an insight as to whether it was the case that military participation actually caused lifetime income um, to be lower. The problem is, um, aside from being unethical, um, we can't typically undertake such experiments, even if we wanted to. So typically what we have with econometrics is we have a sort of load of historical data. So we might have um, the lifetime income of a group of people um, who went into the military and we're comparing that with the lifetime income of the people, uh, a group of people that remain civilians. And by comparing these sort of two averages, yeah, if you think about the average um, lifetime income of someone when, who went into the military and comparing that with the average of the lifetime income of someone that remained a civilian, um, you might think naively that that gives us um, an indication as to the effects of um, military participation on lifetime income. So by comparing these two averages, you might think that this sort of might lead us to quantify the effect which um, military participation has on lifetime income. So you could think about these observed differences in average lifetime income of the military and their civilian counterparts as being due to the psychological effects of military participation. One argument that's often put forward is that these psychological effects uh, propagate throughout an individual's lifetime, which cause um, military participation to have long run effects on, or detrimental effects on lifetime income, which cause their lifetime income to be lower than that of their civilian counterparts. However, there's probably another uh, factor which is also at play, which is that Individuals which sign up for the military in the first place likely probably have lower lifetime income and capabilities than their civilian counterparts. That might be one possible reason, or it might be the case that those that sign up for the military might be less interested in money than their civilian counterparts. So 
This observed difference between the civilians and um, the military in terms of lifetime income is mostly composed of the composite of these two effects. The one which we're interested in is the causal effect of military participation on lifetime income. So I'm going to call that C here. But there's also a reverse causation effect, which is individuals which have lower lifetime income capabilities might or potential might sign up for the military in the first place. So just given the data which we have here, it is impossible to understand which of these two effects is dominating the or which of these two effects is causing the average lifetime income of military personnel to be lower than that of civilians. So this is the sort of difficulty which, which we face in econometrics and um, where we can't actually undertake experiments. So one thing that we often looked for in econometrics is something which I'm going to call natural experiments. Um, and that is what my next video is going to be about. See you then.